Hey, this is Dave Pryor. We're in the leading Agile booth here at Agile 2019. Woody Zool is here. Thank you for coming by. Oh, thanks for inviting me. And before we do the interview, I have a big thank you. I would like to offer you an appreciation. Oh, sure. So when we've done interviews in the past, you are, what I always tell people, you are literally the most inspiring person I ever get to talk oh, to. That's too kind. But you explained mob programming to me and I actually got a chance to do it. Oh, really? Cool. With a remote team with Amitai Schleyer and Troy Lightfoot and a couple other people and a person who knew even less about programming than me and I got to write code and it was so empowering. It just felt really, really cool. Oh, that's cool to hear. Um, so you had a talk this morning yeah. about making it easy, a very simple yes. approach to continuous improvement and you're doing a big workshop on Thursday Yes. to teach people how to do mob programming. That's right. Okay. So if folks are here, they can come and you're going to help them figure all that stuff out? Yep. Okay. Um, how would you explain mob programming to the folks who don't know what it is? Yeah. Uh, so essentially, mob programming is gathering together all the knowledge and skills we need to do the work at hand. Okay. And because we're creating software, that's going to include writing code. Okay. And therefore, we're going to gather together at a single computer and all work together, collaborate at the same moment. Uh, on whatever it is that we need to do. Okay. So it seems a little strange. It seems preposterous. It, it seems impossible. Uh, in some ways, maybe it, it is. But on the other hand, it, it solves some big problems that we have okay. in uh, coordinating uh, the work of people. And the advantages we get from that is sufficient to overweigh or, or, or change the dynamic of of how effective can this be. Okay. We've actually found it to be way more effective than uh, trying to coordinate, divide people up, divide the work up, and try to coordinate that work. Okay. It removes the need to coordinate. So mob programming is really like a team effort at actually writing the software. Okay. We're gonna have a product owner, a tester, a couple coders, a database expert, whatever skills and knowledge we need okay. is gonna be together to work on this thing that we're trying to do. Now, I always, whenever I talk about it in class, I always get questions about like, well, can the BA be part of it? Can Whoever any anybody can do this, right? Sure. Okay. And do, I want to try to see if I if I'm explaining it right. So they're all taking turns coding, swapping out every ten to fifteen minutes or less, I guess maybe. And everybody's writing, taking a turn writing code. Now, not everybody needs to go to the keyboard. Oh, okay. I thought so they did. The, 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 the key is we, we've gathered all the knowledge and brains okay. to do this work. What we're really about is the knowledge and brains. Okay. Uh, not everybody needs to be at the keyboard. Okay. We happen to be switching out at the keyboard in the way that we did it originally and still do uh, because of the mechanism that we, were, that we had in place for learning how to improve coding. Okay. And that was uh, using what's called a coding dojo. And this particular style of coding dojo, we would use a timer. And the person at the keyboard uh, would switch out every four minutes. Four minutes, So okay. that grew That's into our practices to being now typically, I would say, four to 15 minutes. Okay. But it, it's still, it, if a person feels comfortable going to the keyboard, they do. Okay. But they don't. There's they don't no requirement okay. of going to the keyboard. The, the main requirement is if you have knowledge about the work we're doing that the team needs, yeah. that's what you're there for. So you're there to share it. Yeah. Okay. So if you're a database expert and you don't really want to take the keyboard, uh, let's say, to do uh, some JavaScript coding, you, you may not. On okay. the other hand, most people who are database experts know enough about coding to be able to do that. And after a while, usually most of the people on team do end up taking the keyboard. Yeah. But again, the, 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 the main skill or the main reason for being there is that you've got some knowledge the team's going to need. And reverse, you're going to learn all the same things the rest of the team is learning. And uh, for example, about the data needs, we're giving an example of the data person on the team. Right. You're now much more closely in tune with the needs, okay. and therefore your solutions are going to be more spot on. Okay. Uh, and we're not going to be queuing. In other words, we don't need to do a document to take over to the database team right. to tell them what we think we need, uh, to which they're going to tell us some changes and improvements we need to make. Finally, we submit our document. Somebody in their organization has a meeting where they they approve this work to get done yeah. and then they schedule it to get done well we've got all this waiting going on and when the database person's right there on the team all that's just you naturally happens. so they get like the shared domain knowledge that's right so we start getting the shared domain knowledge which is very useful yeah not just to the database person of course so it goes in both directions as well so if the 
let's just say the product owner is there to see uh, as we develop the application that it's meeting what they expected. Okay. We're going to learn that quicker than otherwise. Yeah, than the otherwise. So if we learn a, a day after we've worked on something that it wasn't the right thing, well, we essentially have lost a day yeah. in our schedule. And what we really want to do is find a way to re- eliminate that kind of uh, queuing that happens when uh, we do work and then it waits uh, for somebody else, for to, somebody else. Yeah. to look at it. And, and if we do a value stream map and graph that out, what we're going to find is most of the time spent in doing work yeah. is waiting. Waited. Yeah. Yeah. It's, okay. just, it's a waste of, of queuing, the waste of waiting. Uh, these are important lean concepts. Okay. Yeah. And, and my other understanding is that the person who's typing is never supposed to be the person who has the idea. Yeah, so we use this, um, I would say, guideline that we got from Llewellyn Falco. Okay. Uh, Llewellyn's just brilliant. And he had, he had uh, shared this with me a few years before we started mob programming. In, uh, in pair programming. So okay. with pair programming, uh, the concept that he shares is for an idea to go from someone's head into the computer, it must go through someone else's hands. Okay. This requires a very fluid level of communication. And uh, one thing that I would add to this is uh, let's get good at using the whiteboard. Okay. Uh, Scott Ambler used to say, uh, he, I think he wrote an article, he used to say how uh, important it is. He said the the power of two developers working together at the whiteboard. Yeah. It's like whiteboard just gives us a way to diagram what we're thinking so we get another dimension to that uh, communication. And so they also, as a team, get better at interacting with one another, not just learning the domain, but learning about the team, what so, we can do. That's right. So it has to start out with a desire to work well together. Okay. If we don't have that desire, there's going to be all sorts of conflicts and we're going to be uh, fighting each other. Uh, really, it's not about showing who's better or proving that I'm really valuable. Right. It, it's about learning how to contribute at the right time and in the right way. Okay. A lot of times when we contribute with the, to each other, and this really plays into the, uh, to make it e- easy concept that I talked about earlier. A lot of times... Um, when we're working together, a big part of what we're trying to do is make it where we can be alone. Yeah. And we're not practicing learning how to collaborate with each other. Let's see if we can figure out how to make it easy to collaborate with each other. Okay. That takes practice and study. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, it can take us months or even a year or two to build the skills necessary to do this. Okay. But boy, uh, a lot of it has to do with treating each other with respect. Okay. Uh, being considerate to each other. Uh, providing our uh, point of view in a way that doesn't offend others. Okay. Um, none of this is stuff we are naturally good at. Yeah. We've we got to learn how to do that. Okay. So I want to ask you about make it easier in a moment. Yes. I have two questions specifically that I've been saving for a long time. Sure, <laughs> so, sure. And one of them, I, I interviewed Linda Rising this morning. And, and oh, this, she's great. She is. Okay. And, and this came up in the conversation um, that people can't stay focused for more than 50 minutes. 15 minutes? 50, five zero. Oh, five zero. And I'm always wondering, when you're doing my program, like how long at a stretch would a team do that? Ah, oh, well, this is a good point. So, uh, so can you stay focused on a, uh, a football game that actually takes more than 50 minutes? Yeah, because there's tons right? of breaks. So this is sort of the point. Okay. You, you never have to just sit and stay focused to most things to, to a high level. Yeah. What you need to do is have enough focus to know that something that is important for you to interact on is in play at the moment. Okay. Now, let's use another kind of a sports metaphor because uh, I never played you know, basketball as a team sport in high school, but I played it on the playground. Okay. And we learned it in physical ed. You know, the teacher teaches about it. And the teacher that I had told us this. He said, most of you are probably too short to really make baskets really well. But basketball isn't about making baskets. Basketball is about passing the ball to someone who has a better chance of making a basket than you do. Oh, wow. Okay. So I thought, well, that's a pretty cool idea. So it's a team sport that requires that you be good at paying attention 
so that you can get yourself in a position where you could have a chance to make a basket and you can notice when one of your teammates is getting prepared to be in a position to do that. So we're always paying this attention that's just enough so we don't get hit in the head with the ball. Yeah. And when we can take an action, we can take the action. But we're not always the one taking the action. Okay. So if I get the ball and I've got it for three seconds... What can you I do with it in that three seconds? Yeah, it, do, am I looking for someone who's got who's open at the moment? So we can use this. There's many other metaphors that we can use. We talked about the music metaphor before. Music well, is a yeah. powerful metaphor for this. Yeah. Uh, when I was a kid, you know, playing music in bands, uh, it's not uh, four or five people all playing the what we would call the lead. Right. You know, playing a break at the same time. They might interplay with that a little bit. We do it in a. In, in a fluid manner and when it's the right time yeah. exactly yeah. we've got to be paying attention so do we need to pay do we need to pay complete attention that's the thing you don't okay Okay, and, uh, just enough. Just the the right amount. Yeah. And so, uh, of course, in a fast acting game like base, uh, basketball, you probably need to pay uh, intense attention yeah. almost the whole time. Okay. Other sports maybe not so much. Okay. Uh, but you get the idea. Yeah. So with mob programming, the point isn't that I have to pay attention to everything that's happening every moment. But I have to be able to stay in the same cognitive space as the okay. team so that when my input is important, I have enough knowledge about what we're trying to do so we don't break the flow of what we're doing. Okay. So, so I'm going to ask my next question is short because they already waved the flag. Oh, at they're us, waving. So we got to get done. Well, I know, but I've got these yeah. questions I've been saving. So my last question, when I did the mob program, we did mob program, did it for like three hours. I'm an incredibly introverted person. And after about an hour and a half, it was really hard i mean it became very taxing to do that so when you were working with people that are very introverted and like to be off by themselves how i mean do you do this every day they do it all day long with frequent breaks like how do you maintain or what, so what advice do you have each individual will have their own uh, pace okay so uh our basic guideline that we followed was at any time if you want to go take a break you go take a break you've okay. got to take care of yourself okay. it's about self-care now if you want to go off and think alone you go off and think alone if you just want to go take a walk and maybe release yourself from having to think for a little while that's fine okay i recently talked to somebody who was a very what you consider introverted person and he said about every hour he has to go into a dark room lay on the floor on his back yeah. and just relax for a little while so you just got to find the thing that works for you okay so you can bring your best back to the team yeah you don't okay. need to stay intently focused the whole time or even with the team the whole time okay it's just you have to be there sufficiently uh, but you got to take care of yourself okay mm -hmm. so this does sound like it flows into the talk you gave this morning yes about making it making things easier and the thing that I wrote down that I copied out of the um, description was make it easier or unnecessary yes. every day. So can you give an example of something well, like that? Well, sure. An easy example from my childhood, my first job, uh, full time, well, not really full time, but my first real job uh, was watering plants in a nursery. Okay. So one of the things uh, my boss had told me was, uh, you know, it's important to water the plants well. That's your primary job. But you also have a responsibility to look for how we can improve things. Okay. And so he said, every week, come to me. If you've, uh, if you notice something we can improve, we'll talk about how you might go about doing that, and okay. then we'll take action. Okay. So at the end of the first week, uh, I noticed, I noticed that the the hoses were leaky. And so we talked about repairing the hoses, and I spent some time the next week repairing hoses. That way we're not wasting water. Yeah. But the next week, I noticed that I'm dragging the hoses around a lot. And so what my improvement idea was, if we put a spigot closer to each place I'm doing the watering, I won't have to drag the hoses around so much. Okay. So it's, if I notice something that makes something I'm doing unnecessary or easier, right. and there's a good example. I don't have to drag the hoses so much. That gives me more time to do a better job watering okay. and a more time to do another improvement. Okay. So each improvement we make will hopefully be giving us more time to do another improvement. So it's like refactoring. It's kind of like refactoring. Okay. And if we do this consistently, it pays us back rather uh, dr dramatically. Okay. Uh, the example from the book, uh, The Power of Pull, uh, he's, no, it's uh, Atomic Habits. He, uh, he has a chart that shows if you can improve things, your capabilities, just 1% a day, over a year, you'll improve your capabilities by 37.78%. That's wow. a heck of a lot of improvement. Yeah. And so uh, all we need to do is start building a, a little habit of making small improvements, okay. and that gives us more time to improve. 
And that's the basic idea. So is this something the team should do every day or individuals should focus on it every day? Like, how does it work out in the team So setting? the way that, that we, uh, well, leading up to mob programming, we were already using these ideas. Okay. And, and the, what we would do is the end of each day, we would take uh, just five minutes to talk about what went well today. Like a quick and retrospective. Then th it's like a mini retrospective. Okay. And what can we uh, do to turn that up for tomorrow? Rather than talk about what problems happened today, we're focusing on what went well today. Because okay. usually we get a much bigger return if we've already got something that's paying off uh, and we can increase it. We usually get a bigger return than if we start trying to figure out how to solve a problem. Okay. And then a bonus happens. Uh, this is what we noticed. As we turned up the good on the things that were going good, a lot of the things that were problems faded away. Ah, we no longer okay. had those problems. So as we were turning up the good on working well together, uh, the need to, for coordinating meetings to get up to speed with each other on stuff faded away. We no longer needed meetings that were just for coordination or uh, status style meetings and stuff. Okay. It wasn't necessary because everybody was always up to date. And they're all committed to doing this, to making their own lives easier. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. And at different levels. This is the beauty of these things. Everybody's capable at different levels. Okay. All we need to do is allow each person to do the best they can do okay could you imagine if we could have a workplace where everybody could just allowed to do the best they could do you can imagine that the rest <laughs> of the world is still trying to figure it out yeah well i, ho I hope we all figure this out yeah. and we need to do it sooner than later yeah, yeah. cool so if you're here uh you can go to the workshop on thursday right yeah, so this could be a workshop about facilitating mob programming. We'll cover a lot of these ideas. Okay. Uh, what, what kind of environment do we need to have? And and that's uh, a big long. It's two parts. It's, I mean, a, it's a two big part. Uh, so, yeah, if you're just really worn out by Thursday, this is just a place you can kick back and not worry about stuff. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, thank you Excellent. very much. If people thank want you. to get in touch with you, what's the best way to reach you? Uh, well, the easiest thing is just find me in Twitter or okay. LinkedIn. But uh, sure, it's... That's the easiest thing. And then we can exchange email addresses and okay. uh, Twitters. Uh, I, I check Twitter maybe once every minute and a half. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. And your, and your website is zuill.us. I wanted to. Uh, yeah, it's. Um, That's the right spelling. Somewhere right? down. Yeah, somewhere okay. down uh, beneath that in a directory, you'll find some of my blog posts and stuff. Cool. All right, Woody, thanks a lot yeah, for coming by. It was great seeing you again.